As I told you in yesterday's video, the most money I've ever made in the stock market was made right after the subprime crisis because I was sitting on the sidelines in uh, probably 75% cash and the panic came and I bought into those stocks that I knew were going to come back. I mean, we were all quarantined into our house, but unless we all died, we were going to go back and, and run our automobiles again. So I bought into some of the oil stocks. I bought into McDonald's. I bought into American Express and then just rode them up. Well, we're in the same situation. We know that uh, the banking regulators screwed up and and the banks got out of whack and the, the regional banks are are, are f failing, but the big banks are, are, are holding on and they will rebound. And then I did a video yesterday showing you that the second largest holdings in Berkshire Hathaway is uh, Bank of America. So I bought Bank of America yesterday. But I want in this video to put together all the information I gathered to make me confident that buying Bank of America was as good as buying Exxon as the price fell out of it as a result of the coronavirus. So let's dig into it and see if Kerry made a good decision. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. It troubles me that when bad things happen, people look for fear and, and safety rather than looking for opportunity. And I, I choose to look for opportunity. As I explained, I did in the, um, in, in the advent of the coronavirus. I think this is a time to look for opportunity. I want to use another quote, buy when there's blood in the streets, by uh, Baron Rothschild it goes along with Warren's uh, quote that I showed in the thumbnail, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Well, would you say there's blood in the streets and would you say that others are fearful? So I think there are. And so I want you to look at this as an opportunity, but do your research so that you understand why the opportunity is an opportunity and how it's most likely going to play out. I did a video on March the 15th in which I ask, uh, who are the three banks that are most likely to fail? And I shared with you this um, Excel spreadsheet that I put together analyzing in the banks. And you can see that I have put in black at that time those that were failing and in yellow those that were more than likely to fail. And then in brown, I showed you the big banks that are, were more than likely going to be the survivors and that's the way it's playing out. I mean, it's not realistic to think that tomorrow we're going to switch to Bitcoin and uh, these banks will go away. The, they, Bitcoin can't provide the functionality of the banks, so they are going to become stronger as the weak ones go to the side. Then yesterday, I decided I was going to hire Warren as my financial advisor, and I looked at his portfolio and discovered that his second largest holding behind Apple was Bank of America. Well, I wanted to know more about why he was in Bank of America and why he wasn't in some of the other banks that I thought he had been very strong in. So I went to my avatar, Eric, and I said, do some research, Eric, and find out what Warren's past actions have been rather relative to the financial community and give me some insight as to where he's going with this situation. Now, I also know that Joe Biden called Warren and asked for his advice, which tells me that Warren probably knows more about what's going on than any of the rest of us. So here is what Eric came up for with for me. Since taking over as CEO of Berkshire Hathaway in 1965, Warren Buffett has achieved remarkable success in the world of investing. Over nearly six decades, Berkshire's Class A shares have outperformed the broad-based S&P 500 with an annualized total return of 19.8% compared to 9.9%. This means that even if the company's stock were to nosedive 99% tomorrow, it would still easily outpace the S&P 500. 
One key reason for Buffett's success is his focus on long-term investing. By investing in profitable, dividend-paying companies and allowing time to work its magic, Buffett has consistently outperformed the market. Another factor is portfolio concentration. Despite having more than $320 billion in invested assets, the vast majority of Berkshire Hathaway's capital is concentrated in just four sectors. One of Buffett's favorite sectors is financials, which he believes is well-positioned to take advantage of long periods of economic expansion. Within the financial sector, Bank of America is a particular favorite of Buffett's. Berkshire Hathaway's stake in Bank of America is worth almost $28.7 billion as of March 2023, making it the company's second-largest holding by market value. Bank of America is not only well-capitalized, but it's also highly sensitive to interest rates. Every interest rate hike from the Federal Reserve boosts Bank of America's net interest income. However, not all big banks are appealing to Buffett. He has been an active seller of big banks since late 2020, having jettisoned Berkshire Hathaway's positions in J.P. Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo. The decision to sell Wells Fargo was likely due to the bank's admission of opening 3.5 million unauthorized accounts between 2009 and 2016. Buffett has long believed that customer trust and a company's reputation are paramount to success. Even though Wells Fargo agreed to pay a $3 billion settlement to put this scandal in the rearview mirror, it's evident that Buffett and his investing team viewed this event as a loss of trust. Wells Fargo stock was methodically removed from Berkshire's investment portfolio, and it wasn't a shock. What has been shocking is seeing U.S. Bancorp, the parent of the more familiar U.S. Bank, shown the door. Based on Berkshire's selling activity in recent quarters, it's quite likely that U.S. Bancorp, which has been a continuous holding since 2006, won't be a holding when Form 13FS are filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission in mid-May. Carry based on this research I offer you one of Warren's famous quotes, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Based on that, I bought into Bank of America yesterday, and I want you to look into it and decide if this is something that you think that carries right, that now that while there's blood in the streets is the time to go and buy, or as people are becoming fearful, get greedy, and when people are greedy, get fearful. These are, I think these are, these are things that you, you should hang on your bathroom mirror and remember, don't m follow the herd. The herd is, is 99% times wrong. The other thing I want to emphasize is what I told you yesterday about Warren's track record. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway has outperformed the S&P 500 3x from 2000 to 2023. And then I just as Eric said, if if Berkshire Hathaway tanked 99% today, it still will, would have outperformed the S&P 500 since 2000. So these are the kind of things that I think we need to, when when the situation is getting uh, crazy and and the, 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 the herd is reacting irrational, to sit back and say, where is the opportunity? Now, is that to say that you take all your cash and dump it into the bank? banking system now? No. But put some exposure there. I want you also to go back and watch that video I did yesterday on Berkshire Hathaway. And I told you uh, that they had more money in cash than they had in any given stock. So I think it was $123 billion or $129 billion in cash. Warren's waiting for the knife to fall further. I don't, I don't try to catch it, but we are going into some tougher times. But these banks will come back much as Exxon and, um, and, and Chevron came back after the corona crisis. You mark my word on that. Okay, that's my take on the banking situation. That's the way I choose to invest is be, like Warren also says, um, be patient. The, the, the stock market is to 
built to reward the patient and take the money away from those who are impatient. Okay, that's my take on this situation, and um, let's talk more about it tomorrow. (music) 